All right, let's see what's going on with this Borderlands 3 info. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. God damn it! You! Stop it! Let us have nice things! Epic and their behavior is harmful to the PC games industry as a whole, and it's baffling to me that they keep getting away with this. I don't normally like to poke controversy on this channel, and this will be controversial because a lot of people like the Epic Store, and I don't, but this is really getting under my skin. I also want to make it abundantly clear that this is just my opinion, John. Not everybody in the Rusty Chains agrees with me, or even cares one way or the other about the Epic Store, and that's just fine. Just don't dive into our Discord and get angry at the other RC guys if you disagree with what I say in this video. Now, in the interest of being fair, I'll explain something Epic does well. In fact, the only thing they do well in my opinion, but we'll get there. They give developers a much larger revenue share from sales than Steam does. Developers deal with strenuous conditions while making games, and get shit from fans on every release and every patch. They deserve the compensation they get, every little bit of it, and I will give Epic credit for that. Now onto the many negatives of the Epic Store. Firstly, let's deal with the biggest thing. Epic Games is a security nightmare. The platform verifiably pokes around on your computer to a lot of places it has no business being, even going into many of your Steam files. This Reddit thread, linked in the description, does a great job of explaining what each of those actions looks like and the severity of them. There's also the waves of account hacks from November of last year and January of this year. In those, as many as 9 million Epic accounts were compromised. Another larger issue comes from the fact that gamers and Epic themselves are praising the platform for offering competition to Steam, while Epic is maintaining that they are not actively trying to hurt Steam. Let's talk about the nature of competition, then. If two identical race cars are at the starting line and need to do three laps around the track, is it a fair competition if one of the cars does two laps before the other is allowed to move? I'd say no. The winner is almost certainly decided by the time the second car is allowed to start competing, so there's not really a point to call it competition in my book. That first car is the game's epic locks down for six months or a year. Exclusivity deals alone, well anti-consumer no matter where they are, aren't something I would usually shout about from the rooftops. What Epic does, however, is take games that were set for a Steam release and pays their publishers to delay the Steam release considerably. Obviously this upsets Steam gamers, especially with higher profile releases. Games Epic has stolen in this manner include Maneater, The Outer World, and most famously, Metro Exodus after that game had a Steam-centric marketing campaign only to flee Steam for a year, even after promising that Epic regretted their method of swiping games while well at GDC. Only eight days later, they announced that they'd swiped Anno 1880 from Steam, with Tim Sweeney later tweeting that they are going to be continuing this hyper-aggressive practice and ignore Steam deals. In the earlier tweet, they mentioned they are giving an opportunity for Valve to be more competitive. But it's not true if Steam is boxed out and can actively lose games. This is not competition. People complained about Steam having a monopoly, yet here we are having Epic buying their own monopoly. Consumers do not win here. The whole point of competing stores is to give customers choice, but we're just forced from one store to another. Epic games are simply corralling customers around, and although the numbers aren't released publicly, I doubt their exclusives are selling enough that their 12% revenue cut makes up what they pay to get these exclusive deals to begin with. Even if we ignore just that type of sales as competition, Epic loses based on functionality as a platform. At the time of this video, based on Epic's own Trello board, cloud saves for games are still at least a month away, user reviews, wish lists, and even playtime tracking, as well as additional payment methods and mod support are four to six months away. Game achievements and a shopping cart are still more than six months away. How do you launch a store without a shopping cart? All that does is make it more hassle to buy multiple products and it actually disincentivizes bulk purchases. Sorry. Automated refunds and gift purchases don't even have any ETA either, though. Those are just some of the biggest issues I mentioned, but as you can see, there's many more. For all the reasons above, I obviously don't care for the Epic Store. 
If you don't either, vote with your wallets and show publishers that the exclusivity payments Epic gives out won't mean much if the games sell poorly. If you do like the Epic Store, cool, more power to you. I'd be happy to discuss the pros and cons, and if I got anything wrong in this video, please do let me know. Thanks for watching. Until next time, don't forget to spread the happy and stay rusty.